All right, I would like to spend a few moments talking about the consequence of resonance. Uh, this is important because you're going to be exposed to this, uh, certainly during your group work of the tutorial that you'll be covering uh, as tutorial for. Um, but it's also because the reason that I have emphasized resonance isn't just so that you can learn how to push electrons around in pi orbitals and lone pairs of electrons, but that you can also understand that there is something more to resonance and it has very real consequences. A good example to actually illustrate this is to look at the difference between acetic acid and ethanol. If we draw out the line structures of that, and you should know how these compounds would look, this is a acetic acid, right, two carbons, it's a carboxylic acid group over there, and ethanol looks like this. If we look at the similarity between these two molecules, they both have two carbons, they both have an OH type of group over here, but this isn't an OH. Because it sits next door to this carbonyl group here, this whole thing becomes a carboxylic acid. Now the clue is a little bit in the name that acetic acid and is a carboxylic acid and that it is uh, an acidic uh, organic molecule. And the reason it's acidic is firstly, well, is primarily because of resonance. So what makes something a good acid? Well, it's a good acid if it can donate its proton to something. We tend to consider the donation uh, of protons to water as our test for acidity. So the lone pair of electrons can pick up this proton <coughs> very easily. There's a little bond in there. It'll go on to this oxygen. Likewise, so we draw out that little equilibrium over there. We'd end up with the acetate anion uh, plus H3O plus. With ethanol, if we had to do the same thing, uh, showing this happen, we have water, we draw out this equilibrium, we would get this product over here, an alkoxide uh, plus H3O+. Now the thing is that the acetic acid is an acid, so the equilibrium lies a little bit to the right. But this, which I've shown you over here, is something that does not normally happen. In fact, the equilibrium is so far to the left over here that this reaction, for all intents and purposes, is something we would just never ever consider going in this direction over here. It's just so small. The question is, is why? Well, the answer, as I've already given to you, has to do with resonance. You see, this acetate anion that I've drawn over there can exist in two resonance forms. So the one is that, and if we draw out the resonance, this lone pair of electrons, which is in the negative charge here, can go in, and that pi bond can then break and give the negative charge on the oxygen up there. So <clears throat> if you are uncomfortable with pushing these electrons, you should go back and look at my other video and make sure that you understand using the skeletal structures in order to do this. And we can take show this resonance going back, and so we would end up like that. So now, essentially, um, how does this all connect together here? Essentially, what is happening is that that negative charge is not sitting just on this oxygen. It's sitting on this oxygen and that oxygen through the resonance form. In other words, the negative charge is delocalized. The consequence of a negative charge being delocalized is that the negative charge is actually therefore stabilized. If the, now follow the logic here very carefully. If the negative charge is stabilized, all right, in other words, this negative charge is stabilized over here. It's going to be on this oxygen or this oxygen. It means that removing that proton is a little easier than if the negative charge is not stabilized. I want to say that again. Because the charge is delocalized and therefore 
stabilized, it is easier to remove this proton because in removing it, the negative charge that's remaining is more stable. Okay, So the reason that acetic acid is an acid is because by removing that proton, we get a negative charge which is stabilized. Ethanol is not an acid because if we remove this proton, this negative charge cannot delocalize anywhere. There are no pi bonds that it can break that this negative charge can move in. If it had to move in, it would have to break a sigma bond, and that's not going to happen. So <clears throat> this is one of the most important consequences, and it comes up in a whole lot of different flavors, um, and you'll be asked one in your group work. As a higher level question, though, just to see if you're paying attention, um, for those of you who are interested, can you tell me why this molecule over here, which is trifluoroacetic acid, why this one is more acidic. In fact, it's a lot more acidic than acetic acid itself. The reason for this is not to do with resonance, but I want you to think about um, the electronegativity of these fluorine groups and what that means to this molecule and then think about why it would make this proton more acidic. And you can come and speak to me about that if you want to know the answer. All right, good.